Hi, this is Tali and welcome to BuildDrew.com. I'm at the 2009 Green Build Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm standing here with Lucas from CertainTeed, and he's going to talk to us about two products that they have exhibiting here. One is the Symphony Slate series, and another one is the hybrid, ins uh, hybrid insulation product. So, Lucas, how are you? I'm very good today. Thank you. Great. So let's talk about the Symphony series first. Right. The uh, the Symphony series is a uh, it's a polymer roofing material uh, that is made to replicate the appearance of natural slate. Um, the big performance advantage of this not only is it a lot less uh, uh, weight on the roof structure, uh, it has extremely high recycle content, but the real bang for the buck comes to the fact that it is a solar reflective roof surface. Uh, it has a solar reflectance above 35 percent, so it qualifies for Energy Star tax credits, which is very important to the purchaser. But in terms of the overall performance of the building. Uh, because it reflects a great deal of the solar energy which, come, which strikes it, depending upon your orientation or your location where your house is, house is going to be, it can reduce your attic temperatures by as much as 60 degrees Fahrenheit, therefore reducing your energy consumption for cooling your home. So it's a very positive thing. You're going to get the, uh, the rebate from the, uh, the tax incentives for being Energy Star, and then you're going to have long-term reduction of your energy bills for using these kind of products. Great. And from an aesthetics perspective, um, you said it's slate and it's actually, it looks like slate, but right. it's significantly lighter. Yeah, because it's a polymer material and not natural stone, it's a fraction of the weight of the natural slate. It's also extremely durable uh, in terms of handling and installation, unlike slates, which can be very brittle. Uh, this material is very durable and takes a lot more abuse. You wouldn't dare walk on a natural slate roof, whereas this can take occasional traffic for maintenance and things like that. So it tends to hold up better for you. And uh, actually, any, any roof that lasts longer is, is much greener. So what happens to this product, um, you know, if somebody needs to change it out? Well, uh, fortunately, it's very long life span. So that would be 40, 50, 60 years down the road. Uh, if they choose to do that, the material can simply be removed and be recycled, uh, either through common methods or sent back to the manufacturer. Uh, there are new green businesses growing all the time that would actually haul this back to us and sell it to us as a raw material, which we're more than happy to take it back. Okay, well, this is an example of a hybrid insulation system. Uh, the traditional insulation materials in our homes have been fibrous insulations, such as fiberglass or cellulose or products like that. And recently, we've seen a real uh, increase in the use of spray foam insulations because they can contribute towards the air tightness of the house, which is extremely important for conserving energy. Uh, the issue has been thus far with spray foams is that they tend to be extremely expensive compared to a traditional fibrous insulation. So what people have been trying to get out of the new hybrid systems is they install a flash coat of the spray foam on the sheathing, the back side of the sheathing, and then install fibrous insulations in front of it to get the air sealing qualities of the spray foam insulation while getting the high efficiency versus cost of the fibrous insulations. And this is an example uh, here of doing the spray foam with a blown fiberglass product as opposed to a fiberglass bat. Uh, fiberglass bats or any kind of preformed materials completely depend upon being properly installed and perfectly fitting into the framing cavity, whereas blown materials have the ability to conform to irregular framing cavities. And with insulations in general, the, the, their performance is completely dependent upon them totally filling the cavity. So that's why uh, this, this example shows both the spray foam and the blown. You can also put a low density bat material in front of this instead of the blown material. Um, but we're, we, we invented the blown materials. We're big fans of the blown materials. We think that they work very well in climates such as or markets like say California with Title 24. Uh, uh, blown materials are preferred. Now does this come as one product or is this installed as two separate products? Um, the, the blown insulation is installed really as two products because once they spray the foam on the wall here, this material is loose like cotton. So what they do is they put a netting in front of the studs on the interior side before the drywall, then they cut a little hole in the netting and they stick their hose through the hole and it's out in the truck they have a giant hopper where they're, they're dumping in the loose insulation like cotton and it blows it through the hose and fills up the cavity between the netting and the spray foam, completely filling every void behind every outlet box, around every wire, so giving a very good insulation. So it's a two-step process. Fortunately, the contractors who do this do both steps. They'll come out and do the spray foam, allow it to cure, and then come back in the same day, quickly hang up the net, which is kind of like the liner on a baby's diaper, and then they fill in the cavity here with the spray foam, or excuse me, with the uh, blown fiberglass. One of the really cool things, if you ever have a chance to walk a house before the drywall's up, where they've done these types of systems, it is so quiet, it is spooky. And so the sound, the acoustic properties, and the, the sound qualities inside the home are incredible with these systems. It's really a neat quality. It's Great. And as far as the, the insulation value, uh, how high is it for this? Well, for the, 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 the closed cell spray foams themselves tend to be between 6 and 6.5 
per inch. So in the first step of this process, in this two by four cavity, we've got one inch of the spray foam. So we're typically looking around an R6 already. Then we get the blown fibers in here. Because you're installing it and you can change the density, you can keep putting more fiber in there, you can actually get higher and higher. So in this example right here, where typically with a fiberglass, like a high density fiberglass bat, we might get an R15. This assembly right now is about an R17. So we're getting the benefit of the spray foam and the air tightness, which actually isn't accounted for in R. We talk about R, that's thermal resistance. It has nothing to do with air leakage. So here we're getting both. We're not only getting the higher R value, which is very important and code required, we're also getting the additional benefit of helping to air seal the building envelope. Wonderful. Okay, thanks, thanks so Thank much for talking much. to thanks us. Thanks for stopping by. This is Tally from Builder.com, reporting to you from the 2009 Green Builds Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for watching.